Hi guys, happy Friday. You might not be watching this on a Friday, but it is a Friday right now. The sun is out and I am feeling really good. This is a video about all the tools that I use every single day on my computer to get my work done. Let's dive in. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is Sketch. Sketch is absolutely my primary design tool of choice at the moment. I did an informal Twitter poll recently and Sketch came out way ahead of Adobe CC, OmniGraph or, um, and other software as the thing that UX designers go to to use. So um, I'm not alone when I say Sketch is the next big design software. It is awesome, I can't love it enough. Um, although I don't tend to do much, uh, you know, hands-on design work anymore. All the designs on my team use Sketch and love it and for that reason I'm always jumping in and out of different Sketch files to have a look at and Sketch is also my design tool of choice for all my side projects. Whenever I do anything on the side I'm always using Sketch. Um, I think my favourite feature is the plugins um, just because the plugins give you just a world of extended functionality that the core Sketch maybe doesn't do. Um, but if you're like using Sketch and like oh I really wish it could do that then chances are you look in the plugin library and voila someone has thought of it before you and has created a plugin for it. The thing with Sketch is that it has been built for digital from the ground up. It's not like um, Photoshop or Illustrator where you know Adobe are now scrambling to um, make it fit for uh, 2017. Sketch is a digital design software and because of that everything in it um, is uh, tailored to that so um, there are so many things in it that are just much more intuitive and much more um, part of the workflow that you would want to do um, that Adobe just doesn't reach but that doesn't mean to say that I'm abandoning Adobe there are so many uh, legacy files resources that have been created with Adobe products that really forced me to um, continue to use Adobe you also can't get better than Adobe for the specialist um, products. If you want to really do a deep dive into uh, motion, you you know you, you'll want to use After Effects, um, retouching Photoshop, uh, laying out documents in Design. So um, I don't see Sketch as a replace for Adobe, but I do see um, them working in combination, and that's what I tend to do in my day to day. The next piece of software that I'm going to talk about is Keynote. Um, a lot of my job nowadays is making decks um, and Keynote is hands down the best software to do that. It has surprisingly extensive animation functionality as well which actually makes it quite good as a rapid prototyping tool. I have been known to uh, rapidly prototype some things up in, in Keynote and it's worked surprisingly well. Um, so Keynote, although I primarily use it to create presentations um, and give presentations on, uh, it's also got a, a back uh, a back channel in uh, prototyping, which um, if you Google uh, Keynote prototyping, you'll find a lot of resources on and actually really interesting. My next uh, piece of software is Spotify. I am the kind of person that has to be listening to something if I'm working uh, on my computer to be able to focus. If I haven't got my headphones in, I am like a fly uh, buzzing about, um, looking to see what's going on. I'm super easily distracted. So for me, Spotify, my headphones, um, put a playlist on, that helps to focus me on the task that I'm doing. Um, I also love creating playlists, send me your playlist recommendations, um, and uh, I'm I basically like so many different types of music that I can just kind of put something on and I'm happy. It's just the noise that helps me concentrate um, for my design work. Slack. Slack has um, really replaced email for a lot of our team communication. It's essentially a set of rooms that you can go in and talk to people on your team in. You can create channels around specific things like a UX channel or a front end developer channel. And um, you can also do things like video call through it. I found that the Slack has helped cut down on unnecessary emails so much. Rather than people sending long chains through on email, it's just a conversation in Slack. Um, and I think that is really, really good for productivity. It also helps with conversations with remote team members. 
uh, before if you were remote it was actually a bit of a faff to you know feel like you were part of the team culture and to be able to communicate really simply and quickly with people now our remote team um, can get in touch with any of us just as easily as if they were in the office uh, which is a real real plus we also have informal Slack channels that help contribute to our team culture. So we have a lunch channel where people um, post up if they're going to go for lunch and people can come join. Um, there is an art appreciation channel, um, which I actually am not a part of, although I think I should be. Um, so, you know, you can create Slack channels around anything and it helps to bring the team closer, I really think. Tweet deck. Now, I'm not a massive tweeter, but I do like to see what's going on. So what I tend to do is I launch tweet deck when I come in in the morning and I have it like the, I have it minimized quite small, just enough so I can see like the rolling news that's coming in. And then every so often I'll look at it and see what's going on. This is good for me because A, I like to keep up with breaking news, just, you know, world news, international news, UK news, um, and Twitter is obviously amazing for that. So, you know, I feel like I can keep up with uh, what's going on really, really easily um, from that perspective. But then also I try and follow um, UX and design people that I feel tweet really useful and educational, interesting things. Um, so during the day I'll often see links to articles or bits of conversations that are happening and I'll open them up in my browser. I, I might not necessarily look at them then but then I've got a bunch of things to look at later on in the day when I've got a bit more time. So in terms of keeping up with news and keeping up with you know UX and design conversations and what's going on I find it really really useful to have TweetDeck running all the time in the background. The thing about Twitter is you know I really recommend just filling your feed with people that you find consistently post interesting, useful, um, educational things, things that bring value to your life. Because if you're following a lot of people that are generating meaningless noise, then having something like TweetDeck running all the time when you're just kind of quickly looking at it means that you're not necessarily going to see things that are interesting and it will probably be a waste of your time. So if you are going to do this, I really recommend cutting down the noise uh, on your Twitter feed. Be brutal. The other piece of software that I use constantly is Notes. I've tried Evernote, I've tried OneNote, I've tried looking at all the different fancy note-taking apps that appear um, on a daily basis, but for me, um, the inbuilt Mac Notes app, Notes, is the best. Um, and for me, it all comes down to one issue, syncing. So the Notes app syncs absolutely seamlessly from my phone and my laptop, which is what I need. Um, I'm often writing notes on my phone on the go and then I need to see them on my laptop or writing longer things on my laptop where it's easier that I'm going to need to access on my phone later. And I've never ever had a problem with syncing, it's just worked absolutely seamlessly. By contrast, um, apps like Evernote and OneNote have syncing issues um, all the time I've found. Um, either things don't load up properly or things don't update. Um, I can't bear the syncing issues in those apps. So whilst on paper potentially those apps have more functionality and more bells and whistles, actually the key bit of functionality that I need to work doesn't. So I'd rather go for notes, which is a lot more simple um, in terms of functionality, but it gets the core things right. So um, I have a few other bits of software that I just wanted to mention that aren't in my dock, but that just are on my computer. Um, the first one is Dropbox, which is my absolute tool of choice for um, storing uh, things in the cloud. Uh, it syncs between my devices super well, um, and I just wouldn't be able to live without it. Th that is where all of my things live, and I feel so comforted to know that all my stuff I can access from any computer in the world, and I'd, I'd be able to get it. So that's really the draw for me for Dropbox. The next thing is a tiny bit of software that you can install to your computer, it's, it's free, it's called Caffeine and what it does is it helps to um, keep your computer screen lit and not dim. Now for me, um, the reason I use this is because I have to change that setting quite a lot depending on what I'm doing um, and all Caffeine does is it sits in the very top bar of your Mac and it's a toggle so if it's on it means your screen won't dim ever. If it's off, it means your screen will dim as per your computer settings. And I just find that little piece of um, functionality super helpful. The other little thing that I've downloaded and that sits up in that top bar is the color picker called Color Note. This is how it works in action. You basically open it, you 
uh, then can pick a colour from anywhere on your screen. It doesn't matter what's open, it just picks that colour and then you can save it up and use it um, elsewhere. Uh, as a designer this is super super helpful um, there's loads of uh, bits of software like this this just happens to be the first one I downloaded so I'm not necessarily recommending this one in particular because I actually haven't done a load of research into different colour pickers um, but this is the one that I've got at the moment and it works for what I want it to do the next piece of software is OmniGraffle. Now this is not in my dock because I actually don't use it very often anymore I really just use Sketch and Adobe but I have used it extensively in the past and I feel like it is the best tool for wireframing and making user flows quickly. Um, the stencils available in OmniGraffle are phenomenal. There's a site called Graffletopia that has um, the biggest selection of stencils that you could ever want for anything and it just cuts down on your making uh, time so much. Uh, if you're able to reuse some of these resources that people have already created. So for that reason, I think um, OmniGraffle is an absolute fantastic resource for anyone who wants to do wireframes or user flows. The final, final piece of software that I'm going to talk about is uh, relatively new on my radar called Zeppelin. It's a piece of software that my design team used to help them collaborate with our development team more easily. And what it does is it imports sketch files and marks them up automatically so that you don't have to sit there and mark up files by hand which is what we used to have to do and it was such a pain. This takes all that pain away um, and does things automatically. It also has some nice features like it allows um, people who are able to access that file to comment and have conversations on that file. It also um, auto generates a style guide based on the documents that you've imported uh, for you. So that's all done automatically and it's really, um, it's really easy. It's super, super handy. It saves hours of work and um, it's something that we've experimented with so far and that we're really pleased with. So that is your lot. Those are my key everyday tools that I use on my Mac. The tools I've mentioned in this video take up 99% of my uh, tool usage on a day-by-day -day basis and um, it's really what I use to get my job done. Please subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more from me and also I'm really interested to hear from you guys. What are the tools that you find indispensable for your design work? Please put them in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to uh, try out some new things.